Hey there, in this tutorial we are going to learn some of the basics of the web app Tinkercad and you will learn how to sort of use its basic functionality to design just about anything that you want. And uh, what we will build here is I made a little ring with a heart with my name etched in the middle. Yeah, that's right, don't judge me. And we are going to learn <coughs> how to make something like this or whatever you choose to do while I am showing you some of the features. And it uh, should be good, so let's get going. I am in my, I am in a Tinkercad project right now, but if I just go here, I will be inside of it. You need an account to sign up, so just when you go to tinkercad.com, you can do the sign up, or if you already have an account, you can do login. And when you are at this screen, you just go to create a new design, and it will load and you will be brought into this grid area right here. And they will give you a sort of generic funky title at the beginning. This one is Fabulous Wasa. But it's like, I do like how they don't have like Untitled 1, um, like Untitled 2. But if you have a bunch of these, they start to get really confusing. So I just want the first thing I want to do is just go to Properties. And I am going to call this ring and then save changes. And now this is called ring. And as you progress throughout your project, it will automatically save. So if you go over here, I'm just going to kind of minimize everything. Tinkercad allows you to drag various shapes onto the surface and manipulate them in different ways. And through these shapes, it allows you to create various three-dimensional objects. So the most simple of these types of shapes are the geometric ones. You can see like a box and a cylinder and all those basic geometric shapes that you've learned and loved so much. And I am going to just bring out this cylinder right here and you can see it allows us to do several things. We can make it bigger. If I drag it like that, and you can see as I drag it, it shows me the millimeters in width and the millimeters in height or length, I guess would be a better way of saying that. If I were to go here, I can make it taller, and that would give me the millimeters in height. If I were to use this, it allows me to bring it up off the ground. You can see down there it's 48 millimeters off the ground now. I can bring it back until it's right on that grid. And then these three dimensions allow you to rotate it. So if I hold this, it will allow me to rotate it that way. And you can see it's kind of clicking. Dun, dun, dun. It's going to like big chunks. If I were to move it to the outside, it will allow me to do it more smoothly. I'm going to put that back. I can have it go like this, move it around like that. And sometimes it only allows you to do two different ways. If that is the case, like I want to move it that way too. So I could just rotate around and now I can rotate the other way. And you can see what I just did there. I moved the camera. And if you go over here, this is sort of the buttons for the camera. So I can move around to the right. I can go up top I can go down left. I can get back to where I was. I could zoom in or I could zoom in at various lengths. Now, this is useful and it allows you to move the camera around, but what you're gonna to wanna to do after a while is use the keyboard shortcuts. So instead of going around this way, if you hold down control or do the right click on a Windows mouse or some kind of secondary click, two fingers on a, on a trackpad a lot of times, that will allow you to rotate around your shape and see it from all different angles. If you use the zoom ball on your mouse, you could zoom in just like that without going over here. Finally, and if you hold down control or shift or right click and shift or two fingers and shift, whatever, it allows you to just kind of move around. I'm going to zoom out to make that easier to see. It allows you to move around in different points. I wonder if you click this, do they give you, yeah, so this is a nice little cheat sheet right there if you kind of forget about uh, what to do. Cool. So I'm just going to get rid of this for now and I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm just going to drag this cylinder out again because I want a ring. Cool. And also if you hold down shift, it does it proportionally. So that could be useful a lot of times too. 
And so I, my ring is going to be circular like this, but like if I tried to put my finger, my finger through that, it would just, I'd like break my finger and that, that, that would hurt and I don't want that. So what we can use are these things called holes and any shape in Tinkercad, you can convert that into a hole. And holes are pretty simple. They just, if you put that into there and you call it a hole, it will turn into a hole. Then if you drag a box over it and you just do group, it will make that hole permanent. And we now have a nice little crescent moon, but unfortunately this is not a good ring. So if you go up here, you can undo your changes, which is definitely what we want to do. And I'm going to drag this over here. This will work for any kind of shape. So if you were to like, Put that up there and like that. Turn that into a hole. You can see you have an odd, an odd pyramid in the middle of your shape. But you could experiment around with that and it will help you make what you want to make. You could also change the color. So if I like, it won't, uh, and like if I'm messing around with this, it kind of helps see the different parts of it. Now, I did that before and I could spend a lot of time like really trying to get this fine and I like, could change my camera angle and how did I get that right? It's, it's really tough, I'm, I'm not sure. But a better way of doing this is to use this align feature. So if I highlight everything like that and I go to align, this will allow me to see if it aligns on the Z axis, which is up and down on the, what would that be, the x-axis, which is left and right, and on the y-axis, which is up and down. So if I wanted to make that in the middle there, I could just go like that and like that. And now, because I know they're aligned, I know they are lined up well. And these would go vertically, but I don't really need it for that, so I'm just going to put them. Now, if I group these, oops, I forgot to make that a hole. It's not good. I make, nah. make that a hole and then I group them. I have a nice little ring like that that is too tall, but I could just bring it down. You can see I'll bring it to about five millimeters. Perfect. And I am just going to bring it, I can't bring it that way. Still can't. There we go, and just bring it up so it's 90 degrees. And it's up like that, cool. And I'm gonna make that right so it's on the surface. And now all I wanna do is, I've done my geometric shapes, but I can mess around with the letters. I could've put a K on there, that'd be pretty cool. Much more manly than a heart too. Um, but I am going to be nice and tender here, and I am gonna do the heart. And so I can go down the symbols, you have numbers, everything. And there is my heart right there. And I am just going to rotate it around so it is at 90 that way. And also so that it is at 90, not exactly, or that way. Just bring it up. And now you can see like this is, wh whoops. <laughs> this is where you definitely need that align. Cause if you try to like, I've seen many people mess this up or like that may look good, but then you try to go over here, like it's not even touching it. So for these, you definitely want to do the align. Align, I want to align it like that and in the middle. Perfect. Now you can see it's not touching, but if I just bring it down, it is right there. And I want to group it again, because right now if I were to move this heart, it's, oh no, I, I'm, I messed it up. But if I group it, boom, it's all one thing and I can move it around how I want. Now, the final thing that I am going to do is I am going to etch my name into the ring. And you saw before that they have letters and I could try to do K and do it there and like rotate it, but that would get really, really tedious. And I don't want to do that. And come to think of it, there's been a lot of other things that like I may have wanted to do that it's just, they seem really tedious to do given the way that the shapes are made and like it seems like a pretty limited selection of shapes but fortunately tinkercad has these shapes called uh, shape generators and they allow you with to have much more finely grained control over what happens in those shapes and they're 
generated by the community and there's some made by Tinkercad and you can kind of mess around with these and see which one might support the idea that you have. It's always good to go through here first if you think you're, if you have some idea and you want to do it like this one right here. So you can, so you can change the height of it, those fin lengths, the radius, the wall, and you can make like more, more, uh, more fins and yes, yeah, so how many sections? Yeah, I got a bunch of sections. Cool, like that. And obviously that's not what I want for this, but if I was to do something with a gear, that might be very, very useful for me to work with. But what I am doing is writing my name. And this text is okay, but this is clearly gonna have some curved text. So I wonder if there's anything in here that would allow me to work with, ah, there we go. Cool. And that's much too big. And it's arced the wrong way, but I can invert the text curve like that. I can move it around and I can change the inner diameter, uh, diameter to make it a little smaller. I could lower the arc to make it flatter. And then I can kind of move it up like that to 90. And then just kind of rotate it on its side. Still need that a little smaller, so let's just zoom in. And I wonder if, oh, I want to change the text to Kevin. And now I can try to align it and see how this looks. The middle, okay, just click off it and I'll bring it up. And that is actually not bad. I can make it a little smaller. Yeah, I would need to, I need to make that a little flatter. I'm not going to try to get it perfect here. You get the idea about how this would work. Bring it in. Oops. Line it one more time just to get a final project there. Okay. And, okay, yeah, there we go. Yep, bring it out. Cool. And now if I turn that into a hole, and then I group it. I have it carved in there that looks a little backwards. So that looks kind of cool. Um, but I hope that was a good introduction to how you could use Tinkercad to model things in three dimensions, whether that be for 3D printing or just for your own fun and enjoyment. But hope that you use these basics to go on and create many, many things. And I hope that was helpful. Later.